my eyes are so fucking bloodshot. Hey guys, my name is Emily and this is going to be part two of my ayahuasca experience. So um, if you haven't watched the first one, a small recap, basically uh, my partner and I went to Peru in, I think it was, I still don't know, April maybe this year and um, we did ayahuasca. So basically ayahuasca is a plant medicine. Um, so people take it, it's like a tea derived from plants um, and you take it and um, you have like a hallucinogenic experience. It's really good for people who have like PTSD or depression, anxiety. It helps them work through their real life experiences and helps them to heal. The first two experiences are a bit crazy, a bit hectic, uh, and then you can watch them on the other video. And so I'm just going to talk about the last three ceremony nights um, and this one. I don't think I spoke about the third one in the last one. Oh God, I'll have to check. Anyway. Um, so this is my diary that I had when we were there, which is going to help me a lot because it's something that, oh God, it's still to this day just rocks me and blows my mind. And like, there's just so many mixed emotions about it. Um, anyway, so I'm going to talk about my experience. Um, I only drank one of the last three nights. So I drank, drank three times all up. There were five ceremonies. So Caitlin drank, I think four of the nights. Um, and I'm just going to talk about my experience and a little bit about her experience as well. Um, because I feel like we were very, yeah, like it was a bit connected. Anyway, you'll see. So the third night, um, I've written, I chose not to drink in the ceremony tonight and instead just listen to the Icaros. Uh, the Icaros are just like the shamans chanting and the sort of yeah, like the music that they're creating, um, they just like lower and raise the frequencies in the room and just sort of intensifies the experience and then mellows it out and then intensifies it again. And yeah, it's crazy. Uh, sorry, just listen to the Icaros and support my fellow participants. It was so beautiful and I could really feel the energy of the Icaros raising and lowering the frequency in the room. I knew that I've made the right decision. After the intensity of my second ceremony, my mind needed a break. Tomorrow is a day off for the entire group, so it will be refreshing coming back after having two days to solely process my experiences. So the third night, Caitlin and I both didn't drink just because I think I was so rattled from the second experience that I just was like, <laughs> I was an emotional wreck. Like, I just, anyway, I, I there was just no way I could go back in. I was like, I don't think I can do it again at all, like ever let alone just the, the next night. Anyway, so Caitlin didn't want to do it if I wasn't doing it. <sighs> so much pressure there. Um, but I was just like, I can't, like, I just can't do this tonight. Um, so we didn't drink that night. We still went into the ceremony house and we still were, yeah, participated in the ceremony, sort of watched everything happen. And, um, We'd have like a meet, like what well, everyone, like we all have like a sit down discussion with the shaman, uh, sort of just like, go over everything that happened and um share our experiences a little bit and anyway um so the day three when we all sat down just to sort of like talk about the second ceremony i think everyone was a bit rattled after the second ceremony to be honest like a lot of people even the people that didn't necessarily have intense experiences everyone in the ceremony house had like that did were very vocal. There was a lot going on, like a lot going on. So I think it was very confronting for almost everyone there. Um, so I think he, he sort of fed off everyone's uh, feelings and he said to us that the third ceremony, like tonight's ceremony was going to be a lot calmer, a lot nicer. Um, yeah. So and, and it really was like I, looking back, I'm like, oh, do I wish I had drunk? Like, the, have had the ayahuasca that night? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I am glad that I, I guess I didn't do it, but at the same time, like, it was definitely the most peaceful ceremony of all of them. Like, people were just relaxed. Like, the the, the Icaros were almost they were just really beautiful and like soft and. It was a very, I think, gentle experience. And, like, everyone had sort of said that. No one had really, I think, had, a, you know, quite a terrifying experience that night. I think everyone sort of needed a break and they got it. But, yeah, Caitlin pretty much just slept the whole way because she was exhausted just from all the jet lag. Um, but, yeah, I just sort of watched and listened and, yeah, I felt like I was pretty, like, I don't know. Like, it, it was just, it was really nice. Yeah. And then, the, I guess, I think it was, like, maybe that night that... I started realizing that 
everyone sort of going through this together. And I think I felt that like connection to the whole group. Whereas at the start, I was very much just like, what, like, you know, they would talk about, you know, like we're experiencing this together and like, you know, like, I don't know, like saying it's a very like communal thing, but I was just like, we're all going through our own experiences. Like, I feel like it's individual, but that night I think, I don't know, it just felt like really connected to everyone. It was really strange. So the next night that we were there, we had just a night off anyway. So we all had like a big um, like sort of community dinner, basically. Like we didn't eat dinner any of the nights that we drank. So the night off, we all had like a dinner together. And I can't really remember what else we did. It was just like a, you know, like a, I guess like a, a day off sort of to like regroup for everyone. And then ceremony four came up. So... Yeah, let's just skip ahead that one day. Um, I sort of had been like umming and ahhing whether to drink again, just because I yeah was still very terrified. I'd just been like working myself up, like sort of like hyping myself up, like you're going to do this, you know, you only got two ceremonies left, like let's just have a little bit, let's ease our way back in, like, you know, you're strong enough to do this, blah, blah, blah. And... And I was just like, all right, I'm just going to have a really, really small amount. Like the, int like I had more, less than the introductory dose, I think. Um, and <laughs> we were sitting down on the mats. Um, so there's like, yeah, there was like at the front and it was just like me, Caitlin, and then this guy next to her. We go up, we drink. Caitlin probably had, I think, the same amount, maybe a tiny bit more than me, but we were very adamant about just having, like, a very small amount. And, yeah, we just sat back down, and I'm, like, not even kidding. I feel like as soon, like, I was I was scared. I was still scared because I was obviously just, like, worried that I was going to have a really scary experience again. But I was really just trying to like work on my breathing, calm, relax my mind, let it happen, trust in it. And as soon as the lights went off, everyone had had their drink, the lights went off. The guy next to Caitlin just started like kicking off like, oh my God, it was literally the fastest I think it had affected anyone in the entire time. And he was just like screaming like, there's demons in me, there's demons in me, like, screaming, like, you know, how do I get them out? Like, how do I get them out? Like, it's fucking inside of me. And, you know, the shaman's just, like, you know, talking calmly, like, you know, you have to, like, kill it with love and get it out with love and, like, you know, you can do this. And, like, it was all, you know, like, no one else, no one else was, was really that vocal that night except this poor guy. And, yeah, he just, the whole time was just like, help, help, help. And like people came over to him and like, you know, he was, they went over, he had a cold shower, he ended up coming back. And like, he was just, the whole night was just like up, down, up, down, like spiking. Like, and you know, as soon as I heard him say help or there's demon, like get this demon out of me or whatever it was, like my body was just, oh, my mind and body was just like, oh no like please don't affect me like don't affect me like I was just like praying to whatever like I don't <laughs> even I just was just like please 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 like I don't want to go through this again like I don't want to do that like I just felt like I could relate so much to where he was and I just was like I'm not ready for this again I just can't like and so I think I just I mean, honestly, like I say, I work myself into a state where I just don't think it was going to affect me. But I think if I had have taken, like if, the way it works, I feel like it's going to get you regardless if you've taken a, a good enough dose. So I just don't think that I've like took obviously enough for it to really take me anywhere. Because I mean, I don't think you, that's something that you can fight with your mind. At the end, it was like relaxing and stuff and, you know, but like that's like hours into the ceremony, like it's almost over. And yeah, like, so... I was just happy at the time that it didn't affect me and like I sort of looked over at Caitlin and like I don't know I didn't really think that she was like going through that much and anyway ceremony ends we go back to our room and Caitlin and I were just talking and I was like oh did like did it affect you did anything happen like I just felt like we didn't really like take enough or whatever and obviously talking about like what you know happened and I was just like I'm so glad because I just I just know where that guy was and I was like I don't want to fucking go there again like 
Um, and she was like, I saw Luke at the end of your mat just staring at you. And I was just like, chills, just chills. Like, whether you, I don't know, like, you know, we've sort of spoken about this to like friends and family and stuff. And I mean, whether you believe like that you actually like, you know, that she actually saw Luke, like whether you believe that, like, that's fine. But like, I think to us, like, that's something that I like truly like believe in. And yeah, so she was like, I saw Luke at the end of your mat and he just like had his like arms crossed and he was just staring down at you. And I was just like, oh my God, like kind of, well, getting really emotional. Um, if you haven't watched the last video, it looks my brother that uh, took his life two years ago, just less than two years ago. And that's sort of one of the reasons that both of us went there because Caitlin found him, passed away, um, which is something that she's really had to work through, that trauma. And yeah, just like she didn't, she didn't have like a full on, like crazy experience where she, you know, was blown out into the universe or anything like that. It was just like, she saw that. And I was just like, this is the reason that I'm, you know, it's one of the main reasons that I'm here. Like this was huge for me. And it was a big test about whether or not I was going to go in for night five. And Caitlin also that night, she saw this like, giant wolf come and just like lay down next to her and just like curl up next to her and lay there she had such cool experiences like going there we thought it was going to be the total opposite we thought she was going to just be like fucking like just pounded the entire time with just like shit and all the crap that she's been through and just like working through so much heavy deep stuff which she did like to an extent but I kind of thought mine was all going to be like, la di da, like I'm just going to like have all these like really crazy good experiences and just like learn these lessons. And I think I was very naive about it all. Um, anyway, what did I write in day four? Uh, last night I mustered up the courage to participate in the ceremony. I probably had a sixth of a cup of ayahuasca and immediately after drinking, my body became fearful. It didn't take long for someone to start asking for help and yelling about the darkness. My body began to tremor. My legs were shaking uncontrollably from the fear that I was going to go back to that place of the second ceremony. Hell. I waited and waited and called on the plant spirits and my spirit guides. I did do that, actually. <laughs> I did that because I was like, please, like, protect me out. <laughs> I did do that. Um, I haven't even read this till right now, so. Time went by, but nothing happened. I could feel the power of the Icaros like thunder from the sky. It was an inclusive ceremony, and Hamilton asked, Hamilton was our shaman, and Hamilton asked us all to sing. I did. I could hear deep, loud whispers behind me and singing along to the Icaros, but I wasn't sure if they were people or spirits. I trusted them. I've told myself that I'm drinking tonight. KJ saw Luke standing at the end of my bed and Samar said that this meant protection. Um, so Samar is one of the facilitators there. I spoke about him in the last one too. I'm going to take a quarter tonight and if I don't see Luke, I'm going to feel mad slash sad. Lol. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> okay. I forgot about that. So yeah. When, okay. So we were, we were singing. We were all singing together in that ceremony and I remember I, I obviously was very scared but I was singing <laughs> I just think about like can you imagine if like this was recorded right in there like you're in the dark like you're scared like I remember I was shaking like my whole body was just like uncontrollably shaking and I'm just like singing these like happy songs like <laughs> like don't, don't. <laughs> like just scared out of my fucking mind anyway so I wrote this down after the fourth ceremony. Okay, so Caitlin and I both like didn't obviously like it wasn't you know a crazy amount, but it happened. And then day five came, off ceremony five came, and on the day, I think I was speaking to the guy that had you know that really intense experience and um, in ceremony four, and you know he was just explaining to me what was happening and oh gosh like. Talking to people was like such a good thing and such a bad thing because 
it was such a good thing. And you were just like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Like we're talking about it. Like we have, split, you know what I mean? Like we've had a very similar experience. We can relate, we can talk. Um, and you know, you're not alone. But then when someone sort of goes through it again, you're just like, fuck, like, I almost don't want to hear about it because it's really shaking my confidence in doing it again. And, you know, it was just one of those things. So, yeah, I just, <laughs> oh, that whole fifth day, I was just a mess. I was like crying, laughing, talking to someone, feeling confident, crying, talking to someone else, feeling even worse, crying, just like fucking, it just did not end. Like, it was just getting closer and closer to the ceremony time. And I was like, I'm doing it. I'm not doing it. No, okay, I'm doing it. I can't do it, I can't do it. No, you're doing it. I was just like, Luke is right there. Like Luke is right there. You, this is what you're here for. Like you want to speak to him. You want to just, you want to have that experience with him. You want to like see how he's going. Like this is literally why you were here. KJ saw him, you're right there. He's right there. Like how can you not do this? Like you are doing this. And I couldn't do it. And like, it just, it just was the most destroying feeling. Like, fear just won that day. Like, I just, you know, I was thinking to the, sh like, the facilitators and I was like, I came here thinking I wasn't scared of anything. And fear wasn't a huge Fear wasn't a part of my life. Fear wasn't a thing to me. Like, I mean, you know, fear to, I don't know. Like it just, it just didn't play a role. And I just didn't realize like how fucking scared I was until I was obviously had that experience and then put in that position again. And I'm like, I just, I, I just, I felt so weak. I felt so weak and shit and just like, I was like really robbing myself of something that day. Anyway, last ceremony, um, we go in at the time I was feeling content with my decision. I was feeling happy because not happy. I think just relieved because I was just so scared. And I was like, this is all, I just think like subconsciously, this is the last time I'm making this decision, whether to do it or not do it. It's the last night. Like, I'm going to have a relaxed night, like, yeah. So I still went into the ceremony. Um, Kaylin and I decided to sit that night. I sat next to her and we just, like, yeah, did as normal. KJ went up, took her last amount. I think she had, like, half a cup that night, um, which is the same we've taken the first two nights. And it just... The energy in that room was like nothing you'll ever experience ever. It's just, it just seems like magic. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's nothing human about it. I don't know. I just, I just knew like we would, you know, I don't know, maybe like a quarter, maybe halfway through the ceremony. And, you know, I'm sitting there, it's pitch black anyway. You know, I'm closing my eyes and, you know, in my own mind. And we're on these rocking chairs and I'm just sort of like rocking away. And you just, like the, like kind of like the first night where you just had this like knowing, like nothing was saying anything, but you just knew in your head, you're like, whoa, like, where is this coming from? Like, I just all of a sudden have these, this just sense of knowing and I was just like Luke's here right now like I could just feel him and I was like I know KJ's with Luke like I know it and I have just this weird feeling like things are just coming up like he's showing Caitlin our firstborn child right now like where does that even come from like I don't like I don't know I I just it I just thought that and I was just like all right and it was a really like positive ceremony like it just i mean we had oh, what happened the so the shamans that night they did like they did sort of something to us i think it was like it was like a like, it's like tobacco and 
they basically like sort of blow it on you in a way in like certain spots and um it's sort of like closing you up and like not like allowing sort of yeah it's just i think it's just like closing everything and wow i'm really good at explaining this um it like closes you up and sort of i think just like doesn't sort of let like bad energy come in and you know this is your experience coming to an end and like it's just you know i don't know so we had like one of like full on like the OG shamans like um like close us up. There's a word for it. I'm sure I'll find it after this. But um Don Alberto. So yeah, it was just a really like positive last night, I feel. Like we were, yeah, I think KJ she was next to me and half an hour, like 45 minutes sort of towards the end of the ceremony, she was just like she's like, "Oh my god, like she sort of come out of it and she like grabbed me and she was like, "I have so much to tell you." And she was like, I need to, I should, I can't fall back into this. Like, I need to remember everything. So she was going to the toilet, like, putting water on her face, trying to, like, stay, like, sober, basically. And I, I just, like, leaned over to her and whispered, like, did you see Luke? And she was like, and I was just like, oh, shit. And so we went back after the ceremony had ended. We went back to our, like, hot bungalow thing. And I just said to her, like, I couldn't wait to hear about it. I was just too excited. And I was just like, you saw Luke. And she was just like, yes. And I was like, did he show you our firstborn child? And she was like, yes. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, why the fuck do I know that? Like, why would, why would I even think? I don't know. So she didn't even go in with that on the fifth night, intending to see him. Um, and so... Like straight away she saw him and he took her to the garage where it happened and Kaylin has only been back in there once and she doesn't like being at our family house let alone anywhere near the garage and he took her there and they just sat in there together, um, just sort of like holding each other's like arms. And he was just apologizing about everything and just said that, you know, he's really sorry that she had to be the one to find him and, and that basically it had to be her because if it was one of his family members that they weren't going to be able to handle it and that he's watched her that he watched her come into the garage and as that happened all of the blackness that he held within himself just like splattered onto her and she's had to carry this and deal with this and he doesn't understand how she's coping and they just sat down in there together and they had their heads on each other, like their foreheads resting on each other. And he just said to her, I'm so sorry. Like, I really want us to let this go. Like, can we let this go? And she said, yeah. And they just sort of span out and they were just elsewhere. And she just like ever since we've gone like she hasn't had any real flashbacks or nightmares night terrors or anything like that about luke and it's just it's quite unreal it's quite amazing like how like I mean, people will say, like, well, do you really think that you spoke to Luke? And she thinks she did, and I believe that. But, like, I mean, people can believe whatever they want. That's fine. Um, but I think if it brings her peace, like, who cares? Like, I, it just, yeah. It was quite it was quite amazing. And then he started talking about uh, my sisters and my mum. And he basically said... Let me have to go over this. So, Caitlin and I have always had this idea that we're going to name our firstborn child Lennox. 
And he said to Caitlin, I'm going to be Lennox's spirit guide. She will have my eyes and I will be with her always. He joked that we named her Lennox because it starts with L and that's relating to Luke. He is going to give her all the knowledge that he didn't have when he was alive. He showed her our firstborn child, which is what I just randomly like knew in the ceremony anyway, which was just like freaking weird. And he was like, it was like her taking her first steps and like his, like her holding like his fingers, like as she's like doing it kind of thing. And yeah, like we'd heard from a clairvoyant before that, um, that he was going to be like our firstborn spirit guide. Um, and then he was just talking about a lot of like personal things for sort of, yeah, each of us girls. So my two sisters and my mom. And he was just saying about me, um, he was just sort of joking and just being like, is she re like for real? Does she really think that I would let anything bad like happen to her like during a time here kind of thing? And, you know, like, cause I was too scared to drink again. And, um, he said that when I cry for no reason, it's because he's crying for me and that I need to stop thinking that I'm disconnected from my emotions because that is why he said that. <laughs> He said that I made him the man that he was. Luke and I are growing up had the same like biological father and we sort of went through a lot uh, together. And I think we sort of protected each other a lot growing up. Um, and I think before this experience, I sort of doubted, not doubted, but I think I second guessed our relationship a lot. And just, I don't know, like, how much we meant to each other. I don't know. I think as, like, we grew up, like, a lot of my family, like, my family, I feel like before this, had just sort of, I feel like we are all living our own lives and we never really had a lot of, like, time together, which is something I really regret. And going back into like moving back into Mar, like I moved back to my mum's um, probably like a year before we passed away. And, you know, I don't know, like I'd said to Caitlin all the time, like, you know, I really want to rebuild this like relationship with Luke and like with being a boy, like, I mean, honestly, bloody hell, like <laughs> he just, I don't know. He just always seemed like, you know, if I'd like make plans with him or whatever, like he would just forget and like act like it wasn't a big deal. And I'd be like really butthurt about it. <laughs> just like, Oh, like I'm trying to make an effort, but anyway, I just think that, um, yeah, like hearing all of this was like a really big thing for me. Just, I mean, people would say that anyway, like, you know, he thought the world of you and he loved you and, you know, we were really close, like growing up and stuff, but I don't know. I just like, I think everyone after like when they're grieving, sort of starts to doubt everything. Um, but this is just like a really crazy good experience I feel for, for like all of um, like my family. Um, and anyway, so Taylor, who's my youngest sister, she was driving Luke's car after he passed away. Um, she didn't have a car before that. And anyway, <laughs> Luke's car is a piece of shit. So, Everything that like Caitlin was like relaying to me, like we both were just like, this is Luke's personality. Like it's just weird. So Luke turns around to Caitlin and is just like, oh, like how shit's my car butt. And he said, <laughs> and he said to say sorry to Taylor. Um, he said that he with okay, so this is all jumbled. I'm so sorry. He said that with Taylor that he's also like sorry that he just didn't know how to be a good older brother. Growing up, Luke was very protective over Taylor, but being protective, it sort of crossed into being a bit of a dick sometimes. <laughs> like, I love him, but yeah, it, it's very true and like... I mean, to even just hear that, like, that's not something that Luke would ever say, but his actions did say that. Like, and yeah, you really didn't misconstrue that protectiveness 
for just being mean. Like, me and my other sister are older than him, so he never really had to play that role with us. Um, and, yeah, I think Taylor, like, you know, hearing that was, like, a very powerful thing to hear as well. He said that he'd attempted numerous times, but had thought about all of us girls individually many times before, which had stopped him. And yeah, he said that this time it wasn't something that he had planned out. And it was just sort of a situation that presented itself in a moment of really low mood. So, yeah, I mean, you always try to map out the moments leading up to it, the moments before, and I mean, whether there was, you know, like any notes or anything like left on his phone or anything like that, which we still haven't been able to get into, but I do believe that it wasn't something that he had orchestrated. Um, yeah, so basically, I don't know how much is too much information, but he had, yeah, mowed the lawns and was putting the lawnmower away, and then it just... I think he just sort of, I don't know, had seen a few things and obviously in that moment decided that that's, that was the time. He spoke a lot about my mum. My mum is someone who has punished herself ever since, doubted everything she's ever done. Um... He had left candles, like some dust and candles on her bed for Christmas. So it happened on Boxing Day. That's the day that he passed away. Um, so on Christmas Day, he left some candles on my mum's bed. And he was saying to Caitlin, who the fuck leaves a candle? He just was shaking his head and he feels so bad because he didn't think that he would actually do it. And he knows what mum did for him. If he had have known he was going to do it and go through with it, he would have left more. He said that mum needs to rest and breathe easy because she did everything right. He said we are all family and we need to remember that. He thinks that looking at us now that it feels like we're all just sort of broken. Um, for me, he said to play him a song in the car for once because he hasn't because I have an audience when I'm driving, dancing and singing. So that's probably the most, um, that's the place where I talk to Luke. I talk to Luke in the car more than anywhere else. Um, one song makes me dance and sing and the next song makes me just cry. And like, it's, um, it's a roller coaster of emotions really. And my other sister, um, she talks to Luke most in, her sort of like backyard like patio a little bit um where she like smokes cigarettes and like Luke used to smoke as well so that's where she speaks to him most and he said you know tell Shara that uh, I'm always out there with her you know having a smoke with her and um he also said to tell Shara not to fill the holes of her life with him and it's interesting because before I went away Shara had said to me you know Oh, yeah, I'm not really looking for a boyfriend because I just think like what's the point because they're never going to meet Luke and I was like oh I was like that's a really weird thing to say like because you know like your boyfriend like you don't have a boyfriend just because you'll be friends with your brother kind of thing you, do you know what I mean like so it was just I just like thought it was a weird thing to say and then that kind of made sense and like when we came back and said that to Shara like I think things just sort of clicked a little bit for her and I think like Luke was just giving her do you know what I mean like permission to just be happy and find happiness in other areas like this this really horrible thing has happened but that doesn't have to mean that you don't that you can't enjoy your life and other parts of your life um He said that he pulls the dinner up on all of us when he we're sleeping. Luke, anyone that knows Luke knows he's very like funny and like arrogant. Like in like the best way though. Like 
yeah, so he just said, like, he just loves it. He's the only guy that we all think of. He said that he knows he, that he left a mess for all of us. He said that mum is the glue that held him together. And he said that he would write each of us a novel if he could. Oh, I just like get literal chills reading this. Like, Caitlin said that like he saw him like holding my chin and just sort of like looking like staring into me. Um, yeah, uh, there was just like a lot of funny things. Like, sorry, I'm just like reading this and trying to say it at the same time. So, um, after Luke passed away, we, I think, I can't remember whose idea it was. I don't know if it was my idea or mum's idea. Like, mum had always said that she wanted a chocolate lab. And I mean, honestly, for anyone that's going through anything, I don't even care if it's grieving, if it's a breakup, if whatever hardship you're going through, you get a dog because they just bring you infinite fucking joy and love. And oh my God, it was just like, honestly, like it was just, I think that was like the one thing that made us smile at the time. It was just, he, oh. We got, so we got, ended up getting two. We already had two dogs in the house. So you can imagine the sort of, <laughs> the madness that was going on having four dogs, well, two older dogs and two puppies. Our two older dogs, one of them, it was really old. They're both quite old. So we thought, oh, it's probably not going to be, you know, a couple of years maybe. And that was sort of like, you know, with all four of them. And then those two would sort of pass away. And one has passed away now, which was Luke's dog, which was, Bloody hard, but um, so we got the two chocolate labs, they're brothers, and Caitlin and I, like, we bought one and then mum bought the other one. So we named ours Bear, and Luke's nickname was always Pig. So mum named her chocolate lab Pig. And anyway, Pig is mum's pride and joy, as you can imagine. He basically sleeps with her, like, he's the only dog that's allowed in her room at night. Um, she's just, you know, thinks the world of him. And anyway, he was just joking around and said to KJ, ask mum what it's like to have two pigs in her bed. He said that the room is getting tired and joked that it's weird sleeping with a dog that's been named after him. Um, so pigs obviously getting bigger now. And yeah, anyway, it's just, it's just like seeing these parts of like, I don't know, this like joking, like humor, like anyone that knows Luke will just tell you, like, he was just like the funniest, like do anything for a laugh, like. Just like having his personality sort of like shine through this experience is just what makes it, I think, so much more real. Like, um, he said he regrets it every single second and he can't wait to be with us all again. He never would have realized what his death would, Im he never would have realized that his death would impact so many people. He said only after he died, he could see his life for what it really was. Yeah, he said that in his life that he was surrounded by roses, but there were these two thorns in his life that just sort of overshadowed everything else. And we've sort of been like trying to pick apart what these two thorns were. And I mean, I think all of us can agree on one of them. Um, but the other is still sort of a mystery. So it wasn't, yeah, that um, clear. But my mum's dad, so our pop, he passed away on Christmas day. I don't even know how many years ago now, probably like, six or seven years ago and Luke and Pop were really really oh probably longer than that now but Luke and Pop were really really close and when he passed away it really really affected Luke like hugely um and so all of us were you know after he passed away when we're you know in our positive phases like you know he's with Pop now and you know he's probably been met with Pop and you know they're together and you know and KJ was like, Luke was saying, Pop was so angry and upset and he didn't speak to him for months because Pop said, how dare you do that to your mom? If I had one more chance to tell your mom I loved her before I died, I would have, and you didn't even tell her. My Pop passed away in his sleeps on Christmas day. So yeah, like he never got a chance to say anything to anyone. Um, and yeah, apparently he was pretty dark on Luke, which I think my mom was pretty, pretty happy about because Obviously, she doesn't have the chance to be angry at him. Um, and, yeah, he was just saying that now Pop and Luke are all good and think they do things together now, like go and visit mom and 
they have a running joke who mum loves more and Luke is like, I know it's me, so like it's fine. Um, but yeah, and his final thing before he left her was like, hey James, just tell everyone to keep their eyes and ears open. Um, yeah, he just basically was saying that that he's always there and he's always trying to give us signs and we're always missing them because we're just so, I just guess, still deep in our grief that, I mean, you miss all that stuff. Like, we're not really, I don't think we're really looking for anything. I think we're so focused on what we're not seeing that we're missing things that are happening. And I mean, KJ and I, we're, we're, we're probably, we do get signs a lot, like I feel. Um, just some weird shit always and like, you know, I don't know. I think we felt him probably more than anyone. Um, but like in saying that, like, yeah, the girls, they go, I think they sort of, yeah, feel things here and there. And I mean, some signs like, you know, you say, you probably don't think it's something like when it's happening to you and then you sort of say it out loud and you're like, Oh, I don't know. And then people are like, that's a sign. Like if someone was telling me that I would be like, Oh my God, like, this is crazy. Like, do you know what I mean? So like, you're sort of just, I think doubting everything and yeah, but he, you know, he said that, he, yeah, he's always there and yeah, I don't know. Like it was just a really, a really crazy experience. Like to hear all of that, I just like Caitlin and I both agree that like she got her experience out of that and I got mine out of hers. Like I think she had to have the experience because if she did like if she didn't have that then she wouldn't have worked through her stuff and i mean we really we really struggled after we passing away because i mean i imagining it like try to put yourself in both shoes like you know you've got the family who want to talk about him and you know have photos of him up and just constantly <laughs> just constantly be reminded and you know share your experiences and just still have him surrounded and, you know, in the forefront of your life. And then, you know, you've got, you know, one of the family members' partners who has experienced this awful traumatic, you know, event and have to, like, you know what I mean? Have his face, like, in her face. And, like, it just, it was a really, like, tough time to for our relationship just because, we're just both going such, like, you know, through such incredibly opposite, different things. And I think you just sort of, it's easy to get sort of impatient with each other because you are just like, why don't you understand what I'm going through? And yeah, it's just one of those things. But I mean, honestly, we have done really well. Like, yeah. God, coming home was just like, just being dumped back into reality. And now that we're here, we're just like, oh my God, like even to this day, like we're still just like, did that happen? Like, did we do that? Like, it just, it's just one of the craziest experiences like ever. <laughs> every every day my answer changes, like, would you go back and do it again? And I'm like, no. Would you go back to it again? I'm like, eh, I don't know, maybe. But I don't know, maybe, maybe in, 10 years or something. Yeah. Um, and someone else did ask a question, like, what would you do to prepare? And I think I spoke about it in the last one. We actually smoked a DMT before we went just to sort of, because Caitlin was very nervous about that, like about like being able to let go and just sort of like fall into it and like let the experience like happen. Um, so we did do that. And I mean, yeah, that was fine. Like, I I mean, well, yeah, if you're someone that's scared, I think of hallucinating. It's not something that lasts very long. It lasts, you know, less than five minutes usually. So um, if you are, like, looking to, I guess, like, prepare yourself in that way, um, that could be an idea. Um, but, you know, just be careful and stuff. Like, I don't want to, like, I don't know, <laughs> condone. Anyway. But I guess just, yeah, do it with someone that obviously knows what they're doing. Um, I mean, you could do that. Um, but yeah, as I said, just like research, research, research. And honestly, like keep an open mind and know that you're going in to do something that's like scary. Like 
it's going to be really hard. Um, you know, whatever you've been through in life, I'm sure, like, everyone's, you know, everyone's got demons, I guess. Um, and just know that that's something that, that you're going there to face that and you're going there to deal with that. Like, you know, you're confronting fears, you're, yeah, you, you're not, you can't, you're not running away from it anymore. Like, one of, one of Caitlin's, like, good friends was saying, the start like you know you're so brave like you're so brave and you know she'd obviously done it and I was like can you stop using the word brave <laughs> you're freaking me out but I'm like she's like 100% right like it is a very brave like you have to be brave I guess to do it yeah anyway uh, so I hope you enjoyed this last experience it's obviously um it's obviously a lot more emotional and nice than the first two uh, yeah, and I think Caitlin's actually going to upload hers too, so if she ever does, I'll post the link in, like, the, like, description thing below. Alright, I'm so sorry that this has taken me so long. I was like, I'm just going to film, like, the next part in two weeks. Like, I don't know. Let's see how long it's been. Two months. Love that. <laughs> I'm so bad. Okay, cool. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed it, and how do you end these things? Bye!